I dearly love that little trailer. Linda does too. I can't extol the virtues enough. It's uh Just driving along a dirt road here in the national forest in Nevada, and here's some wild horses. Looks like they got a young one. Yeah, yeah they got a colt, that little that brown one. Mm -hmm. Well, I just woke up, as you can probably tell by the sound of my voice. These are the first words I'm speaking this morning. Look at this beautiful place and listen. Yep, not a sound. We're so blessed that we get to come into places like this and blessed is the right word. You see, we're the only ones here. We really like traveling this way. Uh, we've been doing this now for years with this little trailer, and I can't I can't extol the virtues enough. It's uh, it gets us into really rough places, and it's strong. It's all welded together, and that's what makes it so that we we don't have to go to state campgrounds, state parks, and we don't have to pay the high prices. And I'd rather be out here anyway, where there's no one else around, and it's nice and quiet and peaceful. But I dearly love that little trailer. Linda does too. We sleep nice and snug in it, and uh, it's all we insulated it and put a heat heating system in it, and we're we're fine in all weather. It doesn't leak a drop, no matter how hard it rains. Uh, this is just for us. This has been the way to go. That with a four-wheel drive vehicle, we're happy. So this is the kind of road we take our trailer up all the time. And we do this quite often. In fact, we've done it for the last two weeks just on this trip alone. <laughs> Going on our third week now. We're having a blast. Well, Linda and I put the locks on the trailer because uh, we're going to go out exploring a bit. We're in a pinyon pine forest east of Caliente, Nevada up at about the 6,000 foot level. Just looks like a beautiful place to go out and explore. We're going to take a GPS because it's easy to get lost in a pinyon pine forest. I found the world's most beautiful ant pile. It's all natural glass. I don't want to bore you with things about Native Americans and arrowhead hunting and things like that, but um, I just want to tell you a little bit about the area that this area we're camped in. It's about oh, 15 miles east of Caliente, Nevada, and there there's obsidian flakes all over the ground here. As I walk around, there's just I'm not going to show you a whole bunch of these, but right off the tip of my staff here you see one but they're everywhere through here they're all over the ground I mean uh, millions of them and the reason I brought this up is because I learned uh, something years ago from a, 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 
a collector and uh, he was very much into uh, Native American history. And what he said was that the Native American males, the Indian males, as they would walk along, they would nap arrowheads as they moved, or napped, you know, cutting tools, stone tools. They wouldn't, they would just rough them out. And then later that evening when they got to a camp or wherever they were settling down for the night, they would, they would, uh, you know, finish them. But as they walked, they would, they would work them. And this whole valley here that I'm in, all of this, is all strewn with uh, with these uh, uh, flakes from obsidian and uh, other kinds of flint, white and brown, and just but the mostly obsidian, and it's everywhere. But anyways, um, they would work it as they as they walked along. So what that tells you is that this area was a major travel route. Interesting, isn't it? Of course, one thing you have to remember is that looking for arrowheads is one thing. Picking them up and putting them in your pocket on public land is another thing. And there's a huge fine associated with that. Do you remember that? Well, we're liking this campsite a lot, but Linda and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the campsites that we don't like in our past experiences. Which kind are those, baby? The civilized kind. <laughs> the civilized kind, yeah. The pay kind. The pay kind, and especially the um, state campgrounds. And the, our experience with state campgrounds has, has not been good at all. And we could only uh, tell you about our own personal experiences and, and, and the states that we travel in. And for example, a uh, night before last, we had to stay in a Nevada state campground. And you know, we paid fifteen dollars for the campsite and it was literally ten feet from our camper to the side of our camper to the side of the next one ten feet that was about it maybe twelve feet but it was fifteen dollars for that spot plus it was another ten dollars if you wanted electricity and I guess that's okay you know if you've got a big RV or something but you know and you had to pay for showers yeah, I have pay showers too on top of that. So anyways, you know, and it was noisy and, and it was dusty. dusty. Oh boy, every time somebody would drive through with their trailer, they, they wouldn't look behind them and they'd leave a big... Yeah, I've grumbled about this before. What's wrong with those people? And the thing is, they leave a big cloud of dust going through the campground and everybody's kind of going, <laughs> you know, but uh, they don't care, you know. So that was... We stayed there because it was the only game in town that particular night. We, you get caught out once in a while, and that's why you end up staying in Walmart parking lots, right? <laughs> but that's been our experience with state campgrounds everywhere. In Wyoming, for example, we paid $17 to pitch a tent. That was it, years? A couple of years? It was a couple of years ago, yeah. But we, we stayed there several times because it was close to Cody, and we loved to go to Cody. We stayed at the Buffalo Bill State Campground there, just... Uh, West of Cody, and seventeen dollars to pitch a tent and a pit toilet. And the thing is that uh, uh, if it was a if we were driving a, a trailer like this, we would have had to pay more, I think. And it just wasn't good. And and there's no discount for seniors, and you pay full price. The the what about Nebraska? Oh, that was terrible. Pulling in in the evening looking for a campsite. You see a sign that says uh, campground this way. So you follow the signs, and the sign says you have to have a permit to camp there, which you can only get through their office. So if you're from out of state and you show up at a Nebraska state park to camp, you're out of luck unless you knew you were going to be staying there ahead of time or staying at a state campground and ahead of time you went somewhere where you don't know where it is and got a permit first. In other words, most states will charge you an out-of-state fee and you pay more, but in Nebraska you couldn't even do that. You had to have the permit ahead of time. Yeah. So we couldn't stay there. At so, least where we were in Nebraska. Yeah, where we were. Uh, Colorado, my goodness. Uh, I don't know if it was just this person just didn't know what they were doing or whatever, but uh, we pulled in uh, to a state park in uh, Colorado and we ended up paying 26 bucks. We had to pay a certain fee for the vehicle. 
then we had to pay a certain fee for the trailer to camp on top of that and then they wanted to charge me for our ATV and I says no we, we just need to back it out of the trailer so that we can sleep in the trailer but they wanted to charge me for the ATV on top of that for $26 we got a dirt spot and a stinking pit toilet <laughs> unusable unusable, unusable. It's terrible where does that leave us guy we got Wyoming oh Utah Utah is the same, except their prices have gone up. Last year they raised their prices up really expensive at their state parks. and But the last time we stayed there, the lady told me it would be $18. And this was, I think, last year. Last, last year sometime. And she says, today is the last day. She says, our prices are going up a lot, she said. So I don't know what they are now, but $18 got us a spot in the sand, down with all the uh, people riding ATVs. And I mean, it wasn't a campsite. It was just a spot in the sand with people doing donuts around you. <laughs> and a pit toilet. So anyways, the, the, our least favorite campsites have been state parks. And I don't know what it's like where you're from and what your state parks are like. But uh, for us, we, that's our least favorite. Probably one of the best is uh, BLM campsites. You're not going to get anything fancy, but at a BLM campsite, at, at least it's cheap. You know, with a senior discount, we stayed at a really nice place in Oregon called Page Springs, and we paid $4 a night. Beautiful, clean, clear, clear drinking water, good drinking water, clean toilets, four bucks a night. And uh, I know it can't last, but uh, so far that's what it is. So anyways, that's what we got to tell you. Is there anything you need to add to that? No. Yep, that's, that's our experience anyway. Well, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. Thanks for coming along. And uh, stick around for the next one. Be sure to like, share, and if you would, subscribe. We'll see you around. Beautiful evening. She's talking about the lava. And the sand. <laughs> True that.